Good happy Tuesday evening, October 20, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Tuesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Tuesday evening, but first we're going to begin with COVID-19 updates. Coronavirus in New Hampshire, important information and latest graphs. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 9,746 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 8,189,710 number of People in the United States have tested positive. 468 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 761 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 219,950 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And now let's take a look at this current map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 121. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 2291. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple daily new positive COVID-19 cases. And the orange new hospitalization and then the red death. And let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple total current COVID-19 cases and in the orange current hospitalization. And let's take a look at this chart here, total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases in the orange, total hospitalization, red death, and blue recovered. And now let's take a look at this chart here, positive PCR test rate and daily PCR test. And now let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here, infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here, deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder, your common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Four members of Peterborough Fire Department test positive for COVID-19. Department quarantines 12 who might have been exposed. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. decided to enroll in Empire Beauty School because I've always had a passion for skin care. My future is headed in a career where I can help people. The first alert that the Peterborough Fire Department had was last Thursday when a firefighter tested positive for COVID-19. We took a look at the schedule, the individuals he'd been working with, that immediately led to a total of five people being placed in quarantine. Three EMS personnel who had worked with the firefighter later tested positive, leading the department to eventually quarantine 12 people. As for members of the public who may have come in contact with the infected personnel, we are confident that none of our providers were interacting with folks um, during infectious periods or during when they were sick. Even with those respirators on, that takes it from an unprotected, moves it into what's considered a protected exposure, or not, not, which makes it essentially not an exposure. The chief believes the call-in firefighter brought the virus into the station where it spread despite precautions. We have a regular sanitation rotation for all of our operations and for the building, whether it's wiping high contact surfaces or we have a, um, a fogger we use that, that sanitizes. The chief says they have a lot of call personnel and per diem employees, so they should be able to weather being short staffed for a while. And while the town is seeing an increase in cases, they're not what's called community spread. You're not picking this up through a random interaction with somebody at the grocery store or in a, you know, in a, in a restaurant or anywhere else in public. Instead, he believes that COVID fatigue is 
is playing a part and says now is not the time to become complacent. For us, what this is highlighting is the need for everybody to stay extra vigilant and remain vigilant. At tonight's select board meeting, along with possible mask ordinance, the selectmen could also consider random testing for town employees. The chief doesn't believe that's a very good use of limited resources. In Peterborough, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man shot and killed by police officer in Thornton. AG's office says police officer shot Ethan Freeman, 37 officials say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Now is the time to add another Chevy to your driveway at Bentley Chevrolet. Buy a new 2020 Chevy Silverado 4x4 LT Double Cab All-Star Edition pickup, nicely equipped, just $38,492. Let's get right to some breaking news this noon. We have new information on the deadly shooting of a man by a police officer in Thornton. The AG says 37-year-old shot by an officer on four-wheel drive yesterday and killed. They say no one else was physically injured and there is no threat to the public related to the incident. The name of the officer involved and information about what led up to the shooting have not been released at this point. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Mesner campaign faces staff resignations. Republican Senate nominee loses three top aides. With just two weeks to go until Election Day, the U.S. Senate campaign of Quarky Mesner is facing a significant staff upville. WMUR political team has learned that Mesner, a Republican vying to unseat incumbent Senator Jean Shaheen, is losing several top aides. Where police ask for public help to finding missing 37-year-old man last seen on September 28th in Manchester. Here is a photo of that man. If you know where his whereabouts are or know where he is, call the Ware Police Department or call 911. Where police are asking for the public's help to find a person missing since late last month. There has been a confirmed sighting of the man, 37-year-old, since about 9.40 p.m. on September 28th near Elliott Hospital in Manchester. Police said the man did not have access to a vehicle and his cell phone has been turned on since he was last seen, has not been turned on since he was last seen, sorry about that. The man is described as 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighing 200 pounds. He was wearing a tan shirt with plaid shorts and black rocks when he went missing. Police said the man has a surgical scar on his right hand. Police later announced that the man was possibly seen in the area of Manchester, Walmart on Tuesday afternoon. He was possibly seen wearing tan corduroy pants, white sneakers, a dark colored jacket, and beanie style cap, and a gray and orange backpack. Anyone with information about the disappearance is asked to contact where police Lieutenant Frank Herbert at 603-529-7755. New Hampshire Roots 
COVID-19 funding, health care is focused in hard-fought U.S. Senate race. Republican first-time candidate Corky Mesner trying to block Gene Shaheen's bid for a third term. By any objective, Mesner, it's a tall order for Republican political newcomer Corky Mesner to out a former three-term governor and current two-term U.S. Senate, who is a virtually household name in the Granite State. And tonight at 7 p.m., Senator Shaheen and challenger Mesner to debate. Shaheen seeking a third term in office. President Trump backed Mesner during primary season. Let's take a look at this video. Palmer Gas and Oil has been keeping homes in New Hampshire, Northern Massachusetts, and Southern Maine comfortable for over 80... The week of Granite State Debates continues. Tonight, the top candidates for U.S. Senate. Tough questions. The biggest topics. Your last chance to see them face off. WMUR's team of journalists. Commitment 2020. The Granite State Debates. In partnership with the New Hampshire Institute of Politics. The race for U.S. Senate. Tonight at 7 on WMUR. Sponsored by Dartmouth Hitchcock Health. We care. We vote. Okay, and there you go on that video. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching this Tuesday evening edition. Have a great rest of your evening. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. I'll have a newsday for coming up in a little bit. Good night and goodbye, everyone.